Hello guys, welcome back to the Reoffender Blister video tutorial number 2. If you want to become a proficient digital modeler, next 20 minutes will do a lot of good to your skills and modeling confidence. You can just simply watch the video and listen to the detailed commentary explanation and annotations throughout the tutorial. Ok, so let's take a look at the final product. This is how the model volumes look like. And this is how the blister renders like in the showroom shader. As you can see, the effect of our hard work from previous video is pretty good. Our highlight looks consistent and there is no strangeness to it. In this second part we carry on where we left off last week. We create the second portion of real fender and at the same time we prepare geometry to blend into our rear bumper. Oh by the way, if you want to watch how the top area of rear bumper was modeled, you can visit this video. The link is in description. Ok, but before we can create the bottom portion of the bumper though, we need to finish off this fender first. Situation recap. In this area, we have pretty much completed the task. Now, I can see there is a little problem here with zebra stripes. Let's see the scan. It's kind of wobbly in here. This scan isn't that accurate. This is not how the usual highlights look like on a real car. Highlights don't widen, get narrower and then widen again, or in other words, they don't get flat, thin and flat again. I think I know where the problem is. This side surface patch will have to dive in a little bit earlier than now. I can see that here our surfaces don't truly represent the scan. This side patch should move inboard by something like half, maybe one millimeter. When I call out a deviation map tool, the surfaces in general don't look bad. The scan could be of better quality in some areas, but all in all, I'm quite happy. The last type of evaluation I want to perform is the curvature cone. Ok, there is a slight dip in here. We will try to push these CVs out just a touch. Quick look at our CV from an acute angle. Can you see it is dipping inside? When you push CVs out, see how this comb is changing. It is looking much better. I think this is fine. The result is good, just don't forget that we have two different panels, the door panel and the rear quarter panel. And there will always be some elevation difference between them, because the digital data scanning was performed on an actual car. Ok, let's create the last piece of the fender. But before we do that, we should do some more work around the corner blend. At the moment, CVs are kind of messy and we need to improve them. I think this patch would have to be moved to somewhere here. So we need to extend this down a bit. To do that, just manually manipulate CVs by pushing, pulling or sliding. Remember to change the view multiple times and if you see any concavities, push CV outboard. Actually, we have created this blend already in our previous lessons. Back then it looked like it was fine, but now it looks nothing like complete. Sometimes alias modeling might feel like it will never end because there is always something to improve. Basically it is a never ending process. Sometimes you think, alright, I'm done, but after some time you come back to it and keep on working on that particular area again and again and again. We want to make this patch run from here to here. And then we will add another feature, a cutout for reverse and fog lamps. 
This portion will be trimmed away anyway, so what we worry about at the moment is to have enough volume to cover up this intersection only. We could make this patch longer than we need and work on it in this condition for a better insight into geometry. Make sure that CVs look nice and then, when they look nice in extended stage, we can then go ahead and shrink the surface to the length we need. For now though, this is not acceptable. There is a lot of work ahead. To make my life easier, I decided to smooth this surface with a smooth tool. By smoothing, I lost the original CV distribution around perimeter. Therefore, I need to realign edges. Let's also project our curve onto the surface and trim. Now, let's compare the differences between blend and the scan data. I'm sure you can see that our blend surface is different this much. Don't worry, just keep tweaking, keep pushing out by quite a lot. It is getting close, in fact, it is getting very close. But for now, we can just leave degree 3. We have position failure, but it's okay. Because we don't need the whole length of the patch. The patch will be trimmed away. Tailgate surface can be shorter as well. We just build as much geometry as we need. Ok, at this stage the CVs still need more work. I suddenly had an idea and decided to simply remove this patch and extend our work in progress blend to the split line. I don't think I need any extra surfaces in here just to make it super clean. It might seem like we are getting nowhere with this idea of extending this surface, but just bear with me and you will see that patience pays off. How would you modify the CVs at this particular moment? Some CVs can go up, others should come down, but I only worry about perimeter. Why? Because now I can use the rail tool and just rebuild our surface. This way we will get a total rebuild of CVs within the patch. This way you can also save a lot of time instead of wasting it by tweaking each and every CV. What I'm going to do now is to make sure that this patch is good enough. But what does it mean good enough? It means that this patch should interact nicely with the blend. I think I'm just going to extend this edge and probably a lining would be a good try at this time. Ok, can you see the holes and CVs? Do these two patches look like they work fine together? Even without using any tools to evaluate, I can see that probably not. Our blend that we worked on so hard to match with the scan moved too much during alignment. Grab and template our curve. Delete our cause, curve on surface. Reproject for your reference. I think we can now slide with an active history to make CVs better. It is safe to do so as long as you keep history active. Because if you don't like modifications you made, simply revoke history and revert the action. I'm sure you remember from our Fender Blister video 1 that you can jump from one CV to another by just holding a control button and navigate with arrows on your keyboard. Depending on service orientation, you would need to move up down or left right. Ok, so we have a problem here. I am sure that you have come across such situations in your modeling career. Let's change to the rear view. At this time I like to delete history and basically manually buff it out. As you know by now, manual work is the king. I can see that I had some unexpected CV movement here. Every time I modify G1 here, I also like to grab G0. You can do it like I do. Pull out these two CVs together first, then lose one and keep pulling out only this one. Ok, so I'm still trying to get rid of this comb dip. 
What would you do to minimize the wobbliness in here? Would you have any proposals? Would you have any ideas? My workflow idea is to make this patch longer. So what I'm going to do is template this patch and extend the side surface with merge box ticked off. When I do that, I basically create a copy of the side surface, then I can just change its length to suit my needs. Make this left side longer to have more room to manipulate. In the meantime, we can perform all necessary projections and trimming. We are not aligning this patch to that patch as yet. First, let's make this patch 5 degrees because 6 seems like too much to me. We could even try to make it 4 if we really wanted to. Let's do a quick comb curvature check. I think it looks okay. It looks like removing 1 degree didn't affect our comb curvature. But what happens if I tried to delete more degrees? I think that our surface will be okay as well. I'm sure that we could make it 4 degrees. I think 4 it's okay. Now we can just trim. And I think, yeah, I know that this surface is the elongation of the side surface, which I don't want to touch or modify. I want to measure edge to surface distance. This is G0, this is G1, that one is G2 and that one is G3. I would like to have a G3 in here. If you want to know why G2 isn't enough, just keep watching, you will learn this later. Okay, so grab CVs and NUV manipulate them, which means normal or perpendicular to surface. Let's add one more hole to keep our G3 secure. I don't know you, but I get very frustrated if I can't see the geometry properly. I need a proper size monitor. But also making surfaces transparent with shiny blue CVs and dark background helps me a lot and I don't strain my eyes trying to see geometry. Also blue color is uh, cold and cool and it's probably better than something like um, a red or yellow. Having said that though, I heard that green color is best for your eyes, but I have never tried, so maybe if you try, just let me know in the comment section. Let's see the comb on the trimmed edge. Just remember that combs on trimmed edges will always have some imperfections. Do you see the concavity in this comb? Do you think it's acceptable? So, here is the reason for our dip. This transition is wiggling. We only have a G2 in here, whereas we need a positive G3. Let's consult our scan to see where we at, and if we have some room for improvement. Well, I think we have overdone a little bit. Do you see the lines? They don't overlap. If you just try to push that CV in, do you see how this follows? Okay, there you go. So this is almost G3. We just need slightly better connection here. Let's grab the second row of CVs and do the same. Quick situation recap. This gray patch is our elongation surface we were just working on. Behind the scenes, I decided that it wasn't long enough. So I made another one, which is this one here. It was created just like the previous surface, by extending the side surface with a merge option off. This blend surface is now different. I added more degrees. Now, it is a 7 degree patch. By doing this, I have more control over this surface and I can sculpt it even further and better adjust comb behavior. Now, the comb looks like that. I still have a little of a dip in here, and I also have a little bit of dip on the other side, here. 
or in other words, this green line is longer than this one, which maybe is not what you want. We will address this problem later. Now, if I just take this last hole and push it in in Y direction, um, you can just press and hold middle mouse button to move it in Y direction. Notice how the surfaces start to accelerate. You can quantify acceleration by observing comb curvature. Comb accelerates exponentially. I am pushing in and at the same time I'm looking at the distance between edge and surface. The comb accelerates and later it would be much much easier to connect it to this blend. Just grab these and don't grab any of those because those affect G3 and we want to have a nice G3 in here. Ok, let's align and see what happens. But first I will make this a bit shorter and then I will align. We can play with degrees. Let's see, maybe we can take away one degree? Uh, no, maybe not. Uh, we can just uh, keep tweaking CVs to obtain G3 continuity. At this stage, I start to realize that this process might be more difficult than I originally thought. There is a lot of going on in our user interface. The display is populated with geometry that we need at the moment, but it is also cluttered with geometry that we used in the past and we might or might not need. Let's move all the secondary templated geometry to a layer and hide it away. Just remember to never delete any geometry because you might need it in the future. As you can see, around the bottom area we have OK transition. We could push just slightly more these three CVs. If the surface dives in too much, we can grab this second row of CV and push out. Now we have a problem here. We have to figure out what to do. Basically, we are not done with CV's arrangement. Because this surface dips in too much, we will push it out. Now, don't forget that this blue line is the beginning of our blend patch that will run from here to our wheel arch. We don't need this bit, so to be honest, anything that happens here is not that important. We only need a nice transition from here upwards. Just behind the scenes I have manipulated the CVs ever so slightly just to get that little improvement. Here is the result. Just one more thing to mention. Why it was very important to have a very good G3 here? Because these surfaces make a base for our fender blends. The blends will be anchored here and we will be able to much easier achieve better results with G3 here. Our blends will have a good highlight and good topology right from the start. If we had just a G2 or a wobbly uh, G3, we would never achieve a good highlight here. We would spend a lot of time trying to fix the problem and quite frankly, that would be a waste of time because no one will sign off such topology unless it's only for an internal design review. You can see the full result in our next video, Fender Blister 3. Stay tuned.